A uniform horizontal rod, OX, is hanging there. It is supported by a cord attached to the wall at Y. This is kind of an equilibrium question from chapter 5. Is the rod in equilibrium? How do we know that? Well, they didn't say that. Is your rod flying? Is it sinking into the wall? Is it dropping? Is it... No. It's just there, hanging there, chilling. So you know that the rod, this or this beam, is in equilibrium. And that will be a big clue to help us later. Okay, what are we trying to find? The tension in the cord. Tension force. So if you look at the forces acting on the beam, it will firstly have a weight. Where will the weight act? Hmm. If it's a uniform horizontal beam, uniform, that means the weight will act exactly in the center of gravity, which is right in the center, between uh, both ends of the rod. So this will be a 100 Newton force acting on it. Then, what other forces are acting? Well, there's some contact force on the wall. We won't worry too much about that because we will get rid of it. And there's tension, more importantly. Tension force here. Now, this tension force is the force acting on the rod. Ah. Okay. If I draw the rod by itself like that, this is a tension force. Okay. So, don't, so I'm looking in terms of the beam, in the perspective of the beam. How do you find anything though? Well, when it comes to this thing, equilibrium means the clockwise moment or torque equals to the anti-clockwise moment or torque. I use the torque moment, they mean the same thing. So we need to choose a pivot point. The best place to choose this is at point O right here. How I know to choose that? Because they told me that it's hinged. Hinge is the best place to choose a pivot because your rod will uh, kind of swing about the pivot, kind of like this. Okay, so how do you find the thing again? Okay, so let's look at the 100 Newton force first. This force is going to cause a clockwise moment. It's going to cause the, the rod to swing clockwise downwards. So this will be force times distance. There's actually two ways to solve this question. I'll show you both. How you can calculate moment is force times the perpendicular distance or Perpendicular force times distance. For weight, there's not much to do there, so I'll just write as this. So 100 times, how far is it away from the pivot? And this force, this will be 2 meters. So I just do 100 times 2. That will give me 200 Newton meter. That's the clockwise torque generated due to that weight. How about tension? This is where the tricky thing comes in. There's two methods. Number one. What if I do the method where I resolve the force? So torque equals to, uh, this will be anti-clockwise torque. It's holding up the bar like this, anti-clockwise. Equals to the perpendicular force times the distance to the pivot. Now, what do I mean by perpendicular force? Notice earlier, I drew this square there. Can you see this thing? man? Let's zoom in a bit more. So that square means perpendicular. The force is perpendicular to the beam. But if you look at tension, it's not perpendicular. It's at this weird 30 degree angle. So I need to resolve it perpendicular. So the component of tension would be something like this. This is the component, vertical component of tension that is perpendicular to the rod. So can I find that component? If I can, I can find the moment. <laughs> we need to do some trigonometry here. Okay, let's draw the whole triangle out. So this component, if 30 degrees down there, this will be 30 degrees, which means I can say that anti-clockwise moment will be, what's the perpendicular force? Ty. What's Ty? Opposite hypotenuse. T sine 30. Is this correct? Double check. Okay, back to some trigo. So, if you look at this 30 degree angle, what is opposite Ty? What is the hypotenuse T? And this will be sine of 30. So, Ty equals to T sine 30. That's where I got that from. Okay, lo, then the distance. How far is this Ty from the pivot? 4 meters. Okay, so 4 meters. Okay, so with this thing, you can plug everything in and equate. 
your clockwise and anti-clockwise force. So that's down here. Okay, la. so clockwise. Oops, where is it? Clockwise. You know, let's use purple color or something else. I'm running out of colors already, man. Clockwise of torque equals to anti-clockwise torque. So 200 Newton meters that we calculated earlier equals to T sine 30 times 4. So what is the answer? Let's calculate. 200 divided by sine 30 divided by 4. 100! So T is 100 Newtons in this direction. So answer is D. Yay! Now what about the other method, miss? You said there's two methods. Yes, I did say there's two methods. In fact, you are encouraged to know how to use both methods because depending on the situation, one method may be easier than the other. So hang in there. Let's look at method number two. So method number two is, let's say, I want to find the anti-clockwise torque, but instead of resolving the force, I resolve the distance. Okay, so let me use orange color for this method. So anti-clockwise torque will be force times perpendicular distance. So if you are not going to resolve the force, what can you resolve? Here, okay, if you draw a dotted line, this is what we call the perpendicular distance to the force. From the pivot, draw a line perpendicular to the force. Then you don't have to resolve the force. You just have to resolve the distance d perpendicular. So to find this used method, you do, you can just write the force, which is just t. But what is d perpendicular? This is where you have to use some trigo again. It is uh, based on the triangle this 30 degrees, and this 4 meters that you know. So what is the distance d perpendicular? It's opposite the angle, and you know the hypotenuse. So this is t sine 30. Oh, actually I should say 4 sine 30. 4 meters sine 30. Is this the same as the previous one? Yep, but different perspective. Because you are resolving the distance instead. So this will get you to the same place lah, okay? So you will have da 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 Okay, so this one is I am resolving distance using trigonometry. In the first part, here I am resolving the force. Two ways to do this. Which way works? Both works. Which one should you know? Both. Because they are tricky ones which one method may be easier than the other. Okay, so that's all for this question. You got any doubts, any questions, just comment below. Um, that's all for this question. See you in the next video.